كن مسلما وكفاك بين الناس فخرا كن مسلما وكفاك عند الله ذخرا كن مسلما وكفاك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده سبحانه وتعالى ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له is the of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised victory for this deen whether through us or not through us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wa in tatawallaw يَسْتَبْدِلْ قَوْمًا غَيْرَكُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُوا أَمْثَالَكُمْ If you don't give victory to this deen, if you don't support this deen, you don't stand by this deen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will exchange you. But victory is coming for this deen. Have no doubt in your heart. It's a matter about, it's a matter of whether you are part of the assistance for this deen or you are deprived. Now, we heard, mashallah, from our respected guests and mashayikh about the uprisings in the world. I'll try to give the discussion that we're having here tonight a different angle, which is a more practical angle in terms of what am I supposed to do? What's responsibility on my back? What change do I have to bring in my life? Nothing, my brothers, is established in this deen without two things. Please understand this. Without two factors, you will never move in your deen. Number one, ilm, knowledge. And number two, amal, action. Without ilm and amal, you will never move forward. Never. And our ummah is struggling in both aspects. Our community, the Ummah at large, we are struggling in both aspects. Number one, there's ignorance in the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. lack of awareness. We are unaware. Enemies of Islam have been working on this Ummah for centuries. And they have succeeded big time in making us ignorant people of our deen. We are unaware of our responsibilities. I don't know what is required of me. I don't know how to please Allah. It is sad. It hurts us, my brothers. Wallahi al-Azim, it hurts us. It hurts me personally to see that the Ummah of Muhammad is shocked. And please bear with me. I'll try to explain myself in depth. We are shocked that enemies of Islam are not just. We are shocked that enemies of Islam are not showing us sympathy. We are saying, look, look, every day we're claiming, we're protesting. Look, the enemies of deen are not just. Look, the enemies of deen are hypocrites. Look, the enemies of deen are not helping the civilians. Look, they are silent. Look, they are this. What do you expect from your enemy? Why is it that you are expecting your enemy to look after your deen? It's exactly a funny example. Imagine someone in a boxing ring. He enters the boxing ring against an opponent. He's fighting with him and then he gets punched. So instead of fighting back, he goes to the audience and says, Look, he just punched me. That's unfair. Why is he punching me for? Why is he violent? Habibi, he is your enemy. He is trying to destroy your deen. Enemies of Islam are not after your money. They're not after your infrastructure. They're after your deen. They come in different forms. They wear different suits. They talk different languages, but they want Islam. They know that the biggest enemy they have in life is this deen. So don't be shocked. You should not be amazed when you find injustice in the world. You should not be amazed when enemies of Islam don't look after you. It is shocking that we want them to look after us. It is shocking that we are expecting them to be just and fair. This itself is ridiculous. It's a ridiculous concept that you want the enemies of Islam to look after you and serve your deen and be just and fair. This will never happen. So we have to be aware. The responsibility of establishing Islam that Sheikh Abu Adnan mentioned before is not their responsibility. It's my responsibility. 
Allah will ask me on judgment day, what did I do for this deen? I have to first be aware that this is my responsibility. Nowadays, enemies of Islam have worked on the Ummah for centuries and have convinced us. First, they convince you to leave deen. This is their main and best target. If you leave Islam and leave the fold of Islam, this is ultimate success for them. If they can't make you leave your deen, then at least they want you to worship Allah on your own. Worship Allah, but keep this religion with you. If you want to pray five times, Salat, I'll build you a mosque. What do you want? A mosque? You want an organization? You want an association? Beautiful. Mosques, I will aid you. I'll build a mosque for you. But so long as you leave this deen between the walls of the masjid. If you want to worship Allah, if you want to grow your beard, put naqab and do it. But please, don't intimidate us. Leave us to our lifestyle. This is why my brothers and sisters, we have to understand that if they fail to make you leave Islam, at least they want you to leave an Islam. That's not the Islam of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All prophets of Allah came with this mission to establish deen on earth. Like we heard in the ayah, an aqeemu deen, establish deen. This is my role. My role is to establish deen in the world. If you go outside anywhere, Especially if you know on media or something and you say, ah, oh, I'm out there to spread Islam straight away. Arrows get pointed, fingers get pointed at you. So are you saying you're out there to Islamize the world? Ah, look, look, he's an extremist. He wants to Islamize the world. Does any Muslim in the Ummah of Muhammad have doubt in this? Of course, we're out there to Islamize the world. There is no hiding the pillars of our deen. And this should not be, this should not be something that's only for Islam. Even, uh, even other religions, any set of belief, if I'm convinced salvation is in this religion, happiness in this dunya and in the hereafter is in this religion, how can I keep it away from people? How can I hide it in my own house? It's only human if I'm convinced that this is the right path, this is salvation, this is happiness, this is success, that I pass it on to humanity. But nowadays, no, they've made us shy. Worship Allah, but in your house. Work in da'wah, but within your community. Don't, don't, don't disturb us. Don't disturb our lifestyle. No, I'm out there and I'm out there to save humanity from the darkness they are in. The Prophet of Allah taught the Sahaba this. He made them all understand that they are responsible for deen in earth. When the Bedouin came and entered the Masjid of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and urinated in the mosque, and the Sahaba are about to hurt him and hit, hit him. The Prophet of Allah stopped him and he taught the man. And then he turned to his companions. Allah sent you. Allah didn't say to them, I'm the Prophet and you just follow and worship Allah. No, you were sent. Allah sent you to make things easy for people. Rabbi ibn Amr, radiallahu anhu, when he went to Persia and entered an honor, uh, 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 to Rustum, the leader of the Persian armies of the Persian Empire at the time. We are people whom Allah sent. He didn't say Muhammad sent me, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He didn't say Umar sent me in his khilaf. He said Allah sent us. To take people and save them from worshipping human beings to worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from the injustice of other sets of belief to the justice of Islam. And from the tightness of this world to the vastness of this world and the hereafter. This was their mission. And every Muslim has to understand that this is my mission. My mission is not like they tell us and teach us. All of us, let's speak reality. Our concerns, the reality of our concerns is the American dream, the Aussie dream, Australian dream. What is our concern? Let's not fake, you know, uh, feelings. Everyone wants a nice house, double story house, a beautiful wife, mashallah, beautiful shiny kids, a nice pet, a dog or a cat in the house to feed every day. A nice pool in the house will be sensational, a beautiful car. This is our dream. Every day you wake up every day in the morning and this is your concern. This is why working 12, 16 hours a day, double shift, triple shift to make more money to fulfill your dream. But you're struggling to wake up for Fajr. 
but you're struggling to give da'wah, you're shy. We have monsters, mashallah, going, taking, you know, uh, taking protection money on the street, but he's shy to give da'wah. He won't call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't have that courage. This is why we say awareness is important. Yes, we are outside there to save humanity from the injustice it is in and spread the word of Allah. Peacefully, we are not saying, oh, we're going to force people, we're going to kill people. But yes, we are out there to spread the message of Islam. And this is my responsibility. It's not our responsibility. Most people are confused. They think this is the Ummah's responsibility. And then the result of the, you know, the, the thinking is wrong. How can people say, oh, you know, the Ummah should do this. Our rulers should do this. The ulama should do this. Mashayikh should do this. Leaders should do this. Associations should do this. You know, uh, community leaders should do this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on judgment day will not ask you, what did the president of Egypt now do? What did, you know, the, pre the rulers of the Arab world do? Allah will not ask you on judgment day, what did, you know, what did the ulama of your time do? Allah will ask you, what did you do? What did you do for Islam? What did you do to the brothers in Syria? What did you do to the brothers in Palestine? How did you sleep at night knowing that Al Masjid Al Aqsa is occupied? Well, how did you sleep at night? This is the question you will be asked.